In this video, I think I got my silliest idea yet. I am planning on building a zoo for every single monster in Minecraft. The problem is, I am in hardcore, so this is a very risky project. But, do you know what? I'm up for the challenge. So yeah, I'm going to have to bring back the deadliest mobs in Minecraft and just put them in a nice little enclosure. I mean, this is going to be very relaxing, no doubt. This video took me 400 Minecraft days and almost two months to make. So if you enjoy it, don't forget to smash the like and subscribe button below. So first of all, I need to find a place to actually build the zoo. Not too close to my house so that I can actually sleep at night, but close enough so that I can get all my materials easily. I've used up all the space over there for building the zoo, but I've realized that behind the frog kingdom, there is actually a relatively large area with nothing. Now the only problem is the fact it's not flat at all. I began the long process of terraforming the entire hilly terrain and transforming it into a huge flat surface so that I could easily build my zoo on top. Now what we're gonna do is get a bunch of stone and we're gonna trace out the outline of the monster zoo. While I was tracing the zoo outline, I realized it actually was blocked by a huge chunk of the mountain. So I thought instead of just mining it entirely with my shovel and my pickaxe, I would be better off using some TNT. So that is why I decided to build a creeper farm to get loads of gunpowder. I then spent a good few hours alternating between destroying the mountain with TNT and going back up to my farm at 2 AFK. Once I was done, the remaining part of the mountain just looked absolutely ridiculous. So I'm going to start off with the enclosure in the center. So it's going to be a large oval shape. And then I'm probably going to have enclosures all around the outline and a few in the center here. Now that I had everything planned out, it was time to actually start getting the mobs in the zoo. And guess what? Some pillagers came along. I guess they really wanted to be in the zoo. So I trapped some in a boat and it was time to start working on the very first enclosure, the pillager. So first of all, I'm going to build their enclosure and then I'm going to figure out how to get 34 name tags. Yeah, that's gonna be interesting. So tell me stop when you want the enclosure. Okay, so number one, let's fill the area up. I was thinking of probably going for a sandy enclosure and I wanted to do a miniature pillager outpost, but yeah, it really looked a bit silly. So I thought I'd be better off doing a pillager tent instead. I even decided to give food and water, even though monsters don't necessarily eat, but I thought it would be funny. At that point, I realized I still needed to do so many things before actually starting the zoo. So yeah, I had a lot on my plate. For getting a large amount of name tags, the best thing to do is to trade with a villager. So I decided I would build a sugarcane farm for paper, a cow farm for books, and a villager breeder for extra villagers. I decided to build the villager breeder at the village because I could get villagers inside very easily. One of the villagers actually wandered in on his own, which was very handy, and I got the other one with a boat. I then went back home to collect a bunch of carrots and then I planted them all in the villager breeder. Now that the villager breeder was all done and working, it was time to head over to the nether to collect a bunch of ancient debris to be prepared for the ender dragon fight because having an elytra would be much easier for building the zoo. I had collected 18 ancient debris and I found another two, which meant I could upgrade my entire armor to netherite as well as my sword. I went to repair all my tools and upgraded my bow. And finally, it was time to loot the nether fortress. 
The only problem was there was nothing to loot, there were no chests and no nether warts, so I had to search the nether for an extra half hour to find another nether fortress. And I finally got the nether warts. After looting all of the chests, I went back to the village and started building the sugarcane farm using an observer and some pistons. Basically, once the first sugarcane reaches three blocks high, all the sugar canes are going to be harvested. I then started working on the cow farm, which was quite funny because it had a special lava button, but other than that, it wasn't very effective because I couldn't get that many cows in the top, but it was perfect for instantly cooking meat, I guess. This is the fate that awaits him. <laughs> I decided to lock up a librarian so that he would be safe from monsters and then I started working on the iron farm. It was a really practical farm because you could get villagers in easily by breaking the beds and you don't need any name tags, a boat will do fine to trap the zombie. And oh my, it is so efficient. I really recommend this farm design because it is so simple and effective. And by the way, I now have a power 5 on my bow. I'd spent several hours AFK at the sugarcane farm and I didn't even get a stack. So I decided to head over to the desert to collect a few stacks of sugarcane for trading with a villager, but in the future I will probably have to extend the farm. I actually quickly ran out of paper and had to trade all my emeralds back to him. Finally, he started selling name tags, so I decided to turn him into a zombie and then cure him so that I would have a reduced price on the name tags, even though I was expecting a much lower price. And now you're gonna see one of the very smart moments of this video. No. <laughs> So we've got Bruce, he's in his little enclosure, he's got his bed, his food, and a picture of his mother. I mean, what more could he ask? Now that the pillager enclosure is done, let's defeat the Ender Dragon. I started off with all the preparations, so I brewed some potions of strength, slow falling, and I gathered plenty of Ender Pearls, and finally it was time to set out on an adventure. I keep wondering, has anybody fallen in the lava ever? <laughs> what does it feel like? Now that the dragon was killed, I made my way through the end looking for some end cities. I came across this really tiny end city that had absolutely nothing in it. But thankfully further off I found an end city with a ship and I was able to collect the elytra. Now obviously being super smart, I'd forgotten to take fireworks, so I had to slowly and carefully make my way back to a portal and then back into the overworld. Now all I have to do is get all these super deadly monsters inside my zoo. The second monster we're going to add to the zoo is going to be the blaze. So I'm going to start off by covering up the ground with nether bricks. I'm also going to need a bunch of sand for glass. So to actually smelt up all this sand and turn it into glass, I'm going to go to the nether and fill up another shulker box with lava buckets. That should be more than enough. Hello there. While I was smelting all the glass, I continued working on the enclosure. So it was inspired by the nether fortress and I added some lava for the blaze to eat and swim in as well as some other decorations. I then started building a long path going over to the fortress because I was planning on bringing him back in a boat. To deal with the fireballs, I collected some magma cream and brewed some fire resistance potions. The blaze kept breaking the boat, which was so annoying, but finally he got in and I named him Jerry. Jerry kept hitting me non-stop. I mean, thankfully I had netherite armor and basically I brought him up using some pistons. He managed to get out of the boat several times, but thankfully I got him back in and then it was a very relaxing trip back to the portal. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jerry. Very nice. No. I mean, thankfully he went through the portal without any issues. 
On a scale of 1 to 10, I would say bringing back the blaze is a 9 in difficulty. The next enclosure will be the zombie. For the zombie enclosure, I'd like to do something relatively nice with like grass and bushes rather than doing something dark and stony. I kind of want every enclosure to be a little bit unique, you know, if I just do the skeleton creeper zombie in just a dark cave, it's just gonna be a bit sad. Once the enclosure was done, I went back to the village to trade some sticks with some Fletchers so that I could buy two new name tags. I chose the name Berta for the zombie because it's absolutely beautiful. And I went to get a zombie from underneath my zoo. So basically, I gave the zombie a helmet thinking that it wouldn't break. That actually wasn't too difficult. So, oh, okay, great. How to lose a name tag yet again. Perfect. Finally, I took the wise decision of building a roof over the enclosure so it looked a bit like a gazebo, I guess. And this time around, Berta II thankfully didn't die. Now that the zombie enclosure is done, I think we're gonna work on the creeper enclosure. So I was kind of debating what I should do for the enclosure. So probably like a mossy enclosure because creepers are meant to be covered in moss. And obviously I will also add plenty of TNT. I decided to add a few amethyst blocks as well as a glass wall all around. Now it's time to get some more name tags. So I'm going to pop by the village to trade sticks for emeralds. For the name, I choose Bert, and now it's time to go get a creeper from underneath the zoo. The creeper actually almost exploded when he entered his enclosure, but apart from that, all went really well and I carefully put his name tag on. Now we're gonna do the skeleton. So for the enclosure, I think we're going to do it similar to the Soul Sand Valley because there are tons of skeletons in this biome. So first of all, we're going to head over to the nether and collect a bunch of soul sand, soul soil, etc. Do you know what? This guy, I'm probably going to put in a boat there. So I'm going to start off by doing half of the enclosure with soul soil and the other half with soul sand. I'm also going to do a sort of fossil in the center. I guess it could represent the skeleton's house, even though I don't know why he would live in a fossil. And finally, let's add a bit of vegetation. At that point, I realized I'd forgotten to give water to Bert. Um, it's not important to give water to a creeper. I don't know why I had to do it. And this happened. Oh no. All that because I wanted to give a creeper water. Thankfully, the skeleton enclosure and especially the blaze enclosure are still intact because if they weren't, I think I would just quit there. Now I need to stop making the same mistakes. No, 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 no. Perfect. To get my mind off how terrible I was, I went to collect some amethyst shards to make tinted glass. Once I'd finished building the skeleton enclosure, I went to get another creeper. Okay, Tootsie, don't mess this up for the 100th time. Thankfully, I managed to get him safely in his enclosure and there weren't any explosions this time. I then went to get a skeleton. So first of all, I gave him a helmet so that he wouldn't burn and then I named him Henry. Next, let's do the spider. I was thinking of doing a jungle themed enclosure because a lot of spider species live in rainforests. My block palette will include moss, jungle leaves, mossy cobblestone, cobwebs, etc. To keep the spiders contained, I decided to shape the enclosure into a glass bottle so that the spiders can't climb out. I then went to get a spider that I named Henrietta and I brought her in the enclosure. We've been doing quite a few simple mobs to bring back. So to change it up drastically, let's do the ghast. Obviously the ghast needs a very large enclosure. So I'm going to start off by covering this large circle with netherrack. 
To actually keep the gas contained, I'm going to cover the sides and the top of the enclosure with glass. Now that everything is ready, the hard part commences. So I need to figure out a way to get the ghast back into the overworld. So that's gonna be interesting. So step one, let's get a ton of obsidian. Step two, make a huge portal. Step three, repeat step two in the nether. And now for step four, let's use our imagination. I thought I could maybe catch a gas with a fishing rod and get him into a minecart for sending him through the portal. So I started clearing out the area and digging up all the netherrack. And guess what? The only thing I caught was this zombified piglin. I then dug out an enormous room in the nether wall, making sure I was in the soul sand valley biome. It took me ages to do, and guess what? It didn't work. So at that point, I was really starting to get fed up because imagine digging out netherrack for hours for no results. It can be a bit frustrating, but I didn't lose hope and I decided to try one last solution. So I went up to the nether roof and built a special contraption to help me get a ghast in a minecart. And I connected it to a long railway with a portal at the end. Now, all I needed to do was wait for a gas to spawn. I waited and waited and honestly, I was starting to lose hope at that point, when suddenly, a gas spawned. So now I need to get this guy in a minecart. Oh great. The second time around I was more careful, but once the gas was on the railway, he shot fireballs at me, so I had to fly off and finally he went through the portal. I made a few attempts at putting a name tag on him and getting him out of his minecart, but in vain, he kept destroying his enclosures, so I just left him like that. I'd say the difficulty of the gas was a good 10 out of 10 for sure. Before working on the next enclosure, I went to check on all the mobs and guess what? The spider had despawned. While I was waiting to find another spider, it was time to work on two enclosures, the Endermite and the Silverfish. First of all, I went over to the end to collect some chorus fruit and some endstone for the Endermite enclosure. I also started collecting ender pearls because that was the only way I could get some endermites. I then started working on the enclosures, so the endermite one just looks like the end. But for the silverfish enclosure, I decided to contrast by using some dripstone, bushes and stone. Obviously, I'd forgotten that silverfish go into stone blocks, but yeah, I will soon figure this out. For getting the endermite, it was quite simple. All I had to do was throw some ender pearls until finally one spawned. So we've got Blurb the Endermite. For the silverfish, it was a little bit more difficult because I had to find one in the world. But thankfully, when I had gone mining earlier, I had actually come across some silverfish, so I went back to the exact same place. I built a long staircase going back up to the surface, and then I mined around until I found a silverfish. I then brought him back to his enclosure, and obviously he went inside a block, so I had to remove all the stone blocks and just replace them with some grass and some leaves. I'd say the Endermite is a 1 out of 10 to bring back, and the Silverfish is a 3. Next, we're going to work on the Drowned. For the enclosure, I decided to do a sort of coral reef inspired tank, so I covered the bottom with sand, filled it up with water, and then added some corals and some seagrass all around. I also started working on the husk enclosure that was right next to it, and I made it look like a sort of desert. I then decided to do a railway in the nether so that I can travel faster, and I went over to the desert to find a husk, and I lured him all the way back to his enclosure. 
For the drowned, I actually wanted to do things the hard way to challenge myself and like bring back an actual drowned from a river or the sea and then I realized it would be really annoying because the drowned would just burn and also he wouldn't want to get out of the water. I could have actually done this at night time but I mean sometimes it's better to do things smarter not harder. And I actually just decided to get a zombie from underneath the zoo and lure him over to the tank and then 30 seconds later he turned into a drowned. Next, let's do the slime and the magma cube. So we all know that they are very similar mobs and I actually decided instead of having two separate enclosures why not have two enclosures merged as one like that there's a sort of nice little contrast so what i basically did is half of the enclosure was like a swamp a bit and the other half was the nether side of the enclosure once the enclosure was done i headed over to the nether and brought back a magma cube the magma cube was quite slow so it was a long trip back I then went over to the mangrove and waited for a slime to spawn at night time. I wanted to bring back a medium sized slime but a creeper came out of nowhere and blew up so I had to bring back the tiniest and slowest slime ever and it took me ages. I also started working on the area between the enclosures so I shoveled down the grass to make paths and it immediately made the zoo look much neater. After checking on Blorb the silverfish, I went back to the village and traded with some Fletchers to be able to get loads more name tags. Now it's time to work on the piglin and the phantom. So just to be clear, I obviously can't bring back a non-zombified piglin from the nether, so the zombified and non-zombified piglin will count as one. For the piglin enclosure, I was inspired by the nether waste biome and I gave him gold nuggets to eat. I'm not sure they're edible though. For the phantom, I wanted to give a wild and magical feel to the enclosure, so I mixed up plants from the overworld and plants from the nether. For food, I gave him some meat because if I gave him some phantom membrane, it would have been a bit cannibalism. So yeah, <laughs> not great. So first I went to get the two piglins I trapped in a boat and they angrily followed me all the way back to the piglin enclosure. For the phantom, I AFK'd at the creeper farm for a couple of nights and I tried to lure them in the enclosure but they would fly back up immediately. I then realized I could just trap them in a boat and I easily got one in and named him Floppy. Next, let's do the Enderman and the Shulker. For bringing back the Enderman, I am not worried at all. But as for the Shulker, it's going to be very tricky. So first, let's start off with the enclosures. For the Enderman, I'm going to do an enclosure that looks like a warped forest. And for the Shulker, it's going to look like the End Islands. Once the enclosures were done, I immediately went to catch an Enderman in a boat and using some pistons, we made our way back up to the zoo and then into the enclosure. So the thing is, Enderman can teleport, so a name tag won't suffice and he will have to stay in the boat the entire time. Now it was time to bring back one of the most dreaded mobs in the video, the Shulker. I mean, shulkers are not that scary or anything, but bring them back from the end through two portals and then all the way over to the zoo. Yeah, that's not going to be very fun. I flew all over to the end and made my way above the end islands in search of an end city close enough to a portal. Finally, I found one and I started building a canal connecting the portal to the end city. I then caught a shulker in a boat and I made my way down the stream and into the portal. I had originally planned on transferring the shulker to a minecart but I realized it was way too risky. So I traveled to the second portal in a boat using pistons to get up. I had cleared a part of the portal with a mushroom and all I had to do now was push the shulker in the portal with water and then break the boat. 
I then built a long dearth path going all the way to his enclosure and I carefully sailed over with the shulker until finally this nightmare was over. I mean, the shulker is no doubt a 10 out of 10 plus to bring back. Next, we're going to work on a group of lovely monsters, all the raid mobs. The advantage is that all these mobs come to you wherever a raid is started. So I got the idea of building a raid farm. I then went to get a villager from a nearby village and brought him up to the farm using a railway. I started using the farm to get a few totems of undying because I was really stressing out about the evoker and the vexes in particular. I was able to get cheaper name tags because I had the hero of the village effect and I also got plenty of emeralds from vindicators. And by the way, let's start with the vindicator. As the vindicator reminds me of a lumberjack, I made a spruce forest themed enclosure with a stack of chopped down logs in the middle. I then put boats all around the raid farm and caught a vindicator that I transferred to a minecart and I sent him down to his new home. I had to temporarily move him out though because he kept being counted in the raids. Earlier on, Bruce the pillager had gotten out of his enclosure to join a pillager patrol and I had accidentally killed him. So I brought in a new pillager for the enclosure. Next, I built the witch enclosure. So I made a witch hut in the center and a swampy terrain all around. I trapped a witch in a boat and brought her down to the zoo, but like the Vindicator, I temporarily brought her away from the zoo because she kept being counted in the raids and I couldn't continue. Now let's do an adorable giant's enclosure, the lovely Ravager. I covered the ground of the enclosure with path blocks so that it looked like the heavy footed Ravager had flattened out the grass and the ground beneath him. I gave him a large trough full of hay and a cauldron with water. Ravagers don't fit in boats, so I caught him in a moving minecart. I couldn't get the minecart off him, so I placed some activator rails underneath and that did the trick. I named the Ravager Gertrude and she followed me all the way back to her enclosure. Come on, Gertrude. <laughs> I'm pretending like I'm so relaxed, but I'm not. Ooh, okay. And now let's do the mobs that terrorize me the most the evoker and his vexes. For the enclosure, I chose to cover the ground with mycelium to give a mystical feel to the place and I added some mushrooms and bamboo. For actually getting the evoker in, I started off by shooting arrows from a distance at all the raiders until there was only the evoker left. I wanted to trap a vex, so I lured one over to a hole in the ground where I had put some circling minecarts and I managed to trap him. But that's when reality caught up with me. Basically, vexes die a few minutes after being summoned, even in a minecart or with a name tag. So yeah, I have to cross out the vex from my list. I still had to deal with the evoker now though. Oh my god, oh my god. I managed to quickly divert his minecart and he went all the way down and straight in his enclosure. I made a few attempts at getting him out of the minecart, but he kept sending vexes each time, so I had to make a run for it. With a bit of patience, I finally got him out, and that is it for the evoker enclosure. I did this once and I am never, ever doing it again. Now that all the raid monsters were in the zoo, I brought the Vindicator and the Witch back to their enclosures. I then finished all the path in between the enclosures and the zoo was starting to look really good. Next, let's do the zombie villager. There was nothing hard with bringing back a zombie villager because I simply got a villager out of the breeder, lured a zombie over, and then I gave him a helmet and brought him back to his enclosure. 
The latter was actually half wild and overgrown, and the other half was cozy with a bed and bookshelves. Next to the witch enclosure, I decided I would add the hoglin. I basically just made a small crimson forest, and for food I put a crimson fungus. I had brought a hoglin to the overworld in the last video, so I already had a tunnel all dug out for the occasion. I wasn't very stressed about bringing back the hoglins because I'd already done it, when suddenly... And it went fine. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> But I made it safely back to the overworld and got the hoglin that was now a zoglin in the enclosure. Next, we're going to do the baby zombie as well as the baby zombie villager. I separated a circle in two and on one side I did an overgrown terrain with path blocks, podzol and bushes for the baby zombie. On the other side, for the baby zombie villager, I made an overgrown landscape as well, but I also added a little bed. I started by getting a baby zombie from underneath the zoo. I tried giving him a helmet, but he simply wouldn't wear it. I tried and I tried, and he just ended up burning in the sunlight. As this was a total fail, I decided to get a baby zombie villager instead, so I retrieved a baby villager from the breeder and I put him in a boat. I then lured a zombie over and he turned the baby into a zombie. I mean, that was a little bit cruel, but yeah, it's Minecraft guys, don't worry. I then waited for the night and I carefully went over to the zoo, making sure to avoid the creepers at all costs. I now had the baby zombie villager in his new home, and actually he really liked his bed, but I was still missing the baby zombie. While I was waiting for it to be night again, I destroyed and rebuilt the raid farm a little further off so that I could use it without the zoo monsters being counted in the raids. Finally, when the evening came, I quickly found a baby zombie and I brought him in his enclosure. Let's move on to the next mob, the stray. So strays only spawn in cold biomes, so I flew over to the frozen ocean I'd found when I was looking for polar bears for the animal zoo. I actually came across a nice spikes biome, which is quite rare, and that was pretty awesome. I thought strays didn't burn in sunlight as they had a sort of rag on their heads. So I got one in a boat and as soon as the sun came up, obviously he burned to death. The next evening I caught another stray in my boat and immediately made my way home. Oh my, Ooh. <laughs> oh dear. Oh no, she's coming to get me. Oh no, I'm locked up in ice. I put the stray in a safe place and now it was time to build the enclosure. I covered up the ground with snow and then I collected plenty of ice from the ice spikes biome and built some custom ice spikes. I also went to get plenty of sand because I was going to make all the walls with glass. It started raining, so I went to get the stray and he was so annoying to bring back. No, where is he? Gary! Gary! Come on! And when we finally arrived at the enclosure, this happened. Even after repairing all the damage, I'd forgotten a bit of glass and Gary got out and almost burned to death, which freaked me out because I almost had to do everything all over again. Now we're going to do the cave spider. So first of all, I went over to the mine shaft to bring back a cave spider. Once we arrived back at the zoo, I put her in a little boat while I built the enclosure. So I did something similar to a mine shaft, but to add a bit of contrast to the stone, I added a bit of podzol, path blocks, and I actually used some spruce on the ceiling and on the walls. I then brought the lovely cave spider in and I named her Flurb. And to be fair, I think it's one of the best names I have found in this video. So now I think we could move on to the wither skeleton. 
For the enclosure, I'm going to start off with a netherrack base and then I'm going to build a nether fortress type platform that looks like a cross. At one point there was a thunderstorm so I kept an eye out for a charged creeper and suddenly a skeleton horse spawned. I immediately decided it would be awesome to add a skeleton horseman to the zoo so I managed to trap one in the slime and magma cube enclosure, I put a name tag on him and a few minutes later he despawned. So I guess you can't actually keep skeleton horsemen, only the horse. After all this excitement and then the disappointment, I decided to head over to the fortress to get the wither skeleton. And now all I had to do was simply lure the wither skeleton all the way back to the portal without him hitting me a bunch of times and then bring him over to his enclosure. Now we're going to do the charged creeper. So either you're lucky enough to get a creeper that got hit by lightning or you can get a trident. I decided I would go for the second option because I really wanted to get a trident anyway. After killing dozens and dozens of drowned, I finally got the trident. <gasps> I got it. Oh my god, I'm so happy. The trident was in a really bad shape, so I brought a mending book from a villager and later on I also got channeling and loyalty. For the enclosure, I did something similar to the other creeper enclosure with moss, amethyst blocks and I added an azalea tree in the center. I then lured a creeper over and put a name tag on him. Yeah, I guess I had to get another creeper. While I was waiting for a thunderstorm, I started working on the next mob, the Guardian. First off, I had to find a Notion Monument. So I'm going to trade with a cartographer until he sells me the Ocean Monument map. Now funny enough, I followed the map but came across a Notion Monument before finding the one indicated on the map. So yeah, it was a bit confusing that the villager gave me a map to a monument that was super far away from my house. So yeah, these villagers are a bit sus, I have to say. I built a portal and started making a passage through the nether over to the portal at my base. I then made a super long railway connecting both portals. While I was at the ocean monument, I realized there was a thunderstorm. So I quickly rush back to the zoo and use my trident to turn the creeper into a charged creeper. For the guardian enclosure, I basically just made a little tank and filled it up with water. To catch some guardians, I decided to put a few boats around the monuments, just hoping that some guardians would accidentally get trapped in them. I also started dropping a lot of sand all around the top of the monument in order to remove the water and get to the Elder Guardian. I had obviously brought a friendly mushroom cow with me for removing the mining fatigue with her milk. Soon enough, I noticed that some guardians had gotten trapped in the boats, so I went to get one. I carefully got him out of the boat and he actually jumped in the portal all by himself, which was really handy. He then got caught in my minecart contraption on the other side and I was able to easily send him on his way over to the other portal. When I came back to the zoo, the guardian was actually still in his minecart at the bottom of his enclosure. I then started working on the Elder Guardian enclosure. So I basically filled up a huge tank with water and I decorated with corals and seagrass. I then went back to the monument to continue placing sand to get rid of all the water. Slowly I was starting to get closer and closer to the Elder Guardian chamber and I mean this was by far the longest preparation I had to do to get any mob back to the zoo. Well, it was closely followed by the ghast and the shulker. 
After hours of enlarging the passageway to three blocks large, building a railway up to the monument and removing all the water with sand, I had reached the Elder Guardian's chamber. I strategically put sand all around him to block him up in a tight space. I then somehow managed to trap him in a moving minecart and got him on the railway and trust me, my heart was beating so fast. It was such a stressful moment. Like getting animals in a zoo is nothing compared to getting monsters. I mean, oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> what was I doing? I was delighted to see he got into the minecart as planned and I sent him on his way and followed. I had put a bunch of activator rails outside the portal leading to his enclosure so that he would be released from the minecart and could swim around his enclosure freely. I then went to get the guardian out of his minecart and I collected plenty of prismarine blocks to decorate the outside of the guardian enclosure. Now at that point I thought I was all done so I double checked and realized I should add a few more mobs. So we have the piglin brute, the baby zombified piglin, the baby drowned and finally the baby husk. So first I made a passage going all the way to a bastion and I managed to trap a piglin brute in a boat. And finally I got him in a minecart and sent him over to the piglin enclosure. For the baby piglin, I basically just found a baby zombified piglin in the nether and I brought him back to the overworld in a boat. For the baby drowned, I basically just lured a baby zombie in the drowned enclosure and that was done pretty easily. And finally, for the baby husk, I spent a few nights in the desert waiting for one to spawn and when I finally found one, I brought him back to his father. Thank you so much for watching the video guys. I hope you enjoyed this zoo even though it had monsters instead of animals. I thought it was quite fun but especially very challenging and stressful because I was in hardcore. If you'd like to see more content like this don't hesitate to tell me in the comments and leave a like and subscribe. I guess I will see you in the next video. Love you!